52nd Street is the birthplace of bebop, where Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie changed the face of jazz and music forever. It's a bold name for this new Andreas Eastman saxophone, but is it any good? And who is Andreas Eastman? Actually, I couldn't find any information whatsoever, but let's play the man's saxophone and see if it's any good. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy channel. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone masterclasses and product reviews, please do subscribe. I have some very exciting topics planned for the rest of this year. Now, today we're talking about the Eastman 52nd Street Alto Saxophone. So let's dive in. We're gonna talk specifications, do a playing test, and see is it a good value for your money, and would it make a good first pro horn for you? First things first, this is a professional saxophone, and it sells for about $3,500 currently, and that puts it right in line with a lot of other models, especially ones made in China. But more importantly, it puts it right on the mark with the Yamaha 62, one of my favorite entry-level professional saxophones. And you can check out my full review in the links below. Now, as you can see, it is unlacquered, which I do love an unlacquered horn. I paid a considerable amount of money to have my Yamaha de-lacquered because I play an 875EX, which only comes lacquered or silver plated. So I love the way unlacquered plays, but I have to say I'm not crazy about the vintage patina they put on there. If I buy something that's vintage inspired, I want it to look like it did when it was new. So if I bought a 57 Chevy, I'd want it to look new, not old and rusty. So it is unlacquered, but it looks a little bit like something you'd find in the back of an antique shop, not like something you'd buy in 1945. But it is vintage inspired, and that seems to be a very popular look. P. Moriat, Cannonball, and some other manufacturers are doing this finish, and it seems to be quite popular. If you like it, great. It's not my favorite, but overall, I think it's a good looking horn. As for features, it has everything you would expect on a pro model horn. It's a high of sharp key, a hand hammered bell, and this model actually does have rolled tone holes. I don't have a strong opinion on rolled tone holes. It's kind of a vintage thing they used to do with horns back in the day. Some people love them, some people hate them, some people will opine for hours on internet forums. Do a Google search and make your own opinion. I don't love it, don't hate it either. Not a big deal. It has professional Italian pads, which we all know Italian cows are molto bene, and in metal resonators to boot. And it does have blue steel springs, which gives it a good crisp snap for most of the keys. That being said, I didn't find the action as consistent as the Yamaha 62, which I reviewed, but overall, it was pretty good. So how does it sound? How does it play? All these features don't mean anything if it doesn't play well. So let's throw in a mouthpiece and see what we think. <laughs> Overall, I liked the way it played. The intonation was quite good, predictable, nothing special. The usual suspects were a little bit high or a little bit low, easily corrected. And it does have a good sound. That being said, it is one of the more resistant feeling horns I've played recently. It's got a big kind of tubby sound. That's not good or bad, it just depends if that's your preference. When I was playing a ballad, that's when it felt like it really came into its own. The resistance felt very comfortable and kind of give it a nice warm sound. It was kind of a pleasure to play. As for value, is it worth the $3,500? Is it worth passing over that very good Yamaha 62? In some cases, maybe, depending on your preferences. One interesting point of value is the case. Let's take a look. 
Now, normally I don't get excited about saxophone cases, certainly not stock cases that come with the instrument, but this one kind of took me by surprise. Now, at first look, it looked big and kind of clunky. I thought it looked like something that rebel forces would be wearing when they defend Hoth from the Empire. But after spending some time with it, I really kind of grew to like it, and it may be one of my favorite stock cases that comes with a saxophone. It seems well made. It's a durable vinyl with a zipper shut and Velcro attachment to keep it secure. And it's got space, space for your mouthpiece, space for your neck. And it's got a huge accessory compartment where you can fit nearly any saxophone accessory you can imagine. And the outer pockets actually expand so you can fit a clarinet or other woodwinds if you're that kind of masochistic person that enjoys doubling. I do not, but it also can fit a ton of sheet music. You could fit a small music library in there. Now for the piece de resistance, my favorite part of this case that got me more excited than maybe it should. It's got this very cool accessory pocket on top and you can fit your notes for your practice notes, your pen, your pencil, and it even has a little secret pocket. You can keep your Pokemon cards. Or if you don't have young kids like me, I guess you could put a metronome or tuner, whatever floats your boat. Overall, I think it's a very good value for money. If you like the look of the vintage brass and the engraving and you like the bigger, wider, tubbier sound, you're gonna be very happy. The key work did not feel as tight and predictable as a good Yamaha, but it has its other charms to make up for it. It's gonna make someone a very happy camper. Now, if you've played one, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And stay tuned, we've got some very cool topics coming up next week. Until then, go practice.